Welcome back, everyone. This is The Exxon. I am Rob McConnell coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, to find out about the schedule that we have on the Exxon Broadcast Network for all our shows, visit www.xzbn, and uh, that's xzbn.net. And for the Exxon TV channel, which is channel 21 on Simul TV, www.simultv.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Jennifer Weigel. She is an award-winning broadcast journalist based in Chicago. She won an Emmy for her on-camera reporting for CBS and has also worked for ABC, NBC, WGN, TV and Radio and WLS Radio. Uh, she was a reporter and a columnist, Lessons for Life, for the Chicago Tribune from 2010 to 2015, where she covered Blue Sky Business Innovation, The Remarkable Woman Beat, Lifestyles, Travel, and Food. She also helped launch the Tribune's video department. She is currently a wellness columnist for the Sun-Times Media Group. Her real love is adding humor to life's tragedies through her writing. She's written four books, Stay Tuned, I am spiritu- I'm am spiritual, damn it. This isn't the life I ordered. And psychics, healers, and mediums. A journalist, a road trip, and voice from the other side. They're all listed under the books tab on her website. Her audiobooks can also be found on the audiobooks link on her website, which is jenweigel.com. That's J-E-N-W-E-I-G-E-L dot com. And Jen, welcome to the X-Zone. Oh, thanks so much for having me. What a pleasure. Yeah, it's great having you. Um, wow, you've had one heck of a beautiful career, but I have to ask you about your latest book, Psychic Healers and Mediums. <laughs> yeah. What's that about? Yeah, it's definitely been a ride. I have been fascinated by the uh, unexplainable, I guess mm-hmm. I would say, for a couple of decades. But it's just never really something that's allowed in a traditional newsroom. So I would have conversations on my you know, free time and spare time. And anybody who came through Chicago, I would always request an interview. Mm -hmm. And I started noticing over the past couple of decades, especially the past few years, the increased desire for other people to have me share those stories. You know, I would write them sort of separately in Word documents that I would share with friends. And then it was like, well, geez, I want to send this to my friends. And so I realized there was a demand. So the next thing I knew, I was writing books about psychics, healers, and mediums. (laughs) So so tell me, uh... Do you believe psychics can really predict the future? Um, I think we are all intuitive. I think Mm -hmm. we all have it. I also think that we all have certain destinies that are supposed to play out, and some people have an antenna that can catch those things. But I also think it's a double-edged sword, right? Like there are, um, you know, if everything stayed the exact same way and the exact same vibration and nobody took a sharp left turn, then sure, maybe a psychic could predict the future. But we have free will, and at any moment yeah. we can pick up the phone and decide we want to, you know, take a vacation to Australia. So, I think it's almost impossible to do. I have had some people say they see what they call destiny points, which are things you're, you know, tracking and mm-hmm. supposed to hit. Um, but I, I think that's a very, very slippery slope, especially when you know these people can't go to the grocery store without calling a psychic. It drives me nuts. Yeah, why do you think in the year 2018 in this high tech world that we live in? That people, more and more people, I might add, are seeking out the advice of psychics, mediums, and astrologers. I think that we are in a time right now, Robert, so it's so sad Mm -hmm. that we are so dependent on stimulation that we can't get quiet enough to hear our own inner GPS. You know, and I think technology has a lot to do with that. We have to pick up our phone every I'm writing a story right now about digital addiction and how we have to get that dopamine hit every time we look at our phone. We can't be without it for 10 minutes. And so I think a lot of this has to do with that, wanting immediate answers. We want to drive through for everything. And, you know, back before there was electronics and TV, there was conversations and quiet and Big meditation and, and retreats. And you would you would get your clarity by sitting in silence. I mean, that was that was the Quakers had it right. You know, you sit around and you listen for mm-hmm. the guidance and then you speak when you get it. But we don't have that luxury anymore. So I think people just want answers and they're too lazy to get them themselves. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I, I remember as a, as a kid, you know, we'd sit at the kitchen table. We, you know, it was a great thing to have mom and dad and my brother and I at the kitchen table to talk, to share ideas, to mm-hmm. talk about our futures, what we have forward, you know, what we have to look forward to. 
And, uh, you know, when you went to a restaurant, you went as a family unit. But now my wife and I were at a restaurant the other day where there was a mom and dad and four children, and they were all on their little iPhones. Everyone was on their art device. And that just yeah. happened last night, actually. We were out to dinner. I was with my brother and his son, and I was with my son. Mm -hmm. And the boys wanted to be together watching videos on their phone. And we said, nope, yeah. that's not going to happen. We're going to actually talk to each other. And we had a fun little game. You know, we, we actually took turns telling stories, talked about our day. And there was more engagement that happened in that moment. So I, I think to answer your question about uh, everybody wants, you know, an answer, a quick headline. We all want to, you know, like a quick video to just right. give us the download. And that's why I think – and people don't want to know that things are going to be so painful. There's so much fear and pain right now with the realities of our world that people are looking for something hopeful. And so I don't blame them for that, but I always try to err on the side of, you know, getting the answers within, which we just don't give ourselves enough credit. Can I ask you an off the bar question? Because you're, you're an Emmy award winning reporter. You're a true broadcaster. You're a true journalist. And when you turn on the boob tube and you watch the so-called reality shows, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I'll get, I'll tell you how I feel. I feel like I want to be violently ill. Like, you know what? It is. It is. And not only that, even the reality shows about the stuff that we're passionate about or mm -hmm. that you're passionate about, they're so edited to be yeah. um, fear-based, right? Mm -hmm. Or even these shows that talk about people with intuitive gifts, they are, you know, imagine they're talking for three hours and you're seeing the best six minutes. Yeah. So for me, a lot of that is fake news too. There's so much fake Television. I truly think that an interview like this is the only way that's not edited up and chopped up and whatever is is really the best way. And documentaries are a great way too, yes. but even that's grossly edited. The best way to have a real essence of what something is is to listen to an entire conversation, and then you get the medium, the hot, the cold. You get all of the nuances that don't come in a soundbite. You know, I've always believed that an interview should be like two people sitting down having a cup of coffee at a coffee shop. Is exactly how I feel, so yeah. I knew we'd get along. <laughs> excellent, excellent. How many different stories do you have in your new book? Well, you know what? I went around, um, gosh, with each chapter is a pretty well-known psychic medium, at least in the States um, for that matter. Um, you know, so let's see how many chapters are in there. I don't have it in front of me. I've got uh, Thomas John. I went to see Echo Bodine. Then um, the mm -hmm. other Bodine family members, there's Rebecca Rosen is yeah. in there, Conchetta Bertoldi, Judith Orla. I think there's eight. I want to say eight chapters in there. But I've spent the last two decades interviewing people like that. And I have a podcast called I'm Spiritual Damn It that has led me to, I think, eight audiobooks of the compilations of those interviews alone. So I would say I'm close into the dozens of categories of different healers and psychics and mediums. And some have been amazing and some have been have uh let's just say they aren't used to having conversations in front of a microphone and that's fine too <laughs> i actually like that i like the people that i find sort of in their communities that aren't trying to be famous that aren't trying to get right. books those to me are the most exciting conversations because these people are just trying to help the greater good and they're wired differently than i am and so i always find that the most fascinating oh variety is the spice of life right Yes, absolutely. And you know you were talking about you couldn't talk about the psychics in the newsroom because it was kind of poo-pooed. And yet every reporter that I know or every broadcast journalist always gets that gut feeling on a good story. Completely. And that yeah. is the science behind intuition. Mothers have it. Yeah. You know, even um, The Power of Positive Thinking was a book that Norman mm -hmm. Vincent Peale wrote in the 50s to get business deals. You know, they talk about it in business, but it's not okay to talk about when you're looking for a searching for a missing person, which I know a lot of these psychic mediums that work very closely with law enforcement and help them to solve these cold cases. It's okay to do that as long as you don't tell anybody. Well, you know, prior to getting into broadcasting, I, I was a police investigator. Uh -huh. And I used to get these hunches all the time, that gut feeling, you know, yeah. and every cop I know was also, you know, using that gut, that hunch. And that's what a hunch is. It's a psychic impression. So I don't know. I don't know why it's so tabooed. I think the word psychic is, is it ties to a biblical 
um, devil mm. kind of thing. You know, there's a lot of Christians that feel, and, and that was all a PR move as well to, you know, Jesus was getting downloads. I mean, the whole healing, this greater <laughs> gifts than these you will have, you know, he wanted others to be empowered yeah. with their intuitive gifts. So when people twist that message, yes, there are a couple of, of phrases, but it's, if you put anything above God, then that's considered bad and that's what they did some people did at the time with seers as they called them or gypsies and so that's not to be encouraged jennifer we've got to take a break please stand by and uh jennifer and i will be back on the other side as we continue here in the exome from our broadcast center and studios in hamilton ontario canada my name is rob mcconnell don't go away Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Jen, uh, Jennifer Weigel is our special guest. Her website is www.jenweigel.com. That's J-E-N-W-E-I-G-E-L.com. She's the author of Psychic Healers and Mediums, a journalist, a road trip, and a voice from the other side. Now, tell me, were there any um, any stories that that changed your perspective, your your belief systems? Um, well, yes, actually, um, I met a doctor whenever I meet somebody in science, right? Mm -hmm. A surgeon, somebody who's steeped in the medical community that has had an epiphany or a near death experience that to me helps, but you have to have an experience yourself, I think, to be transformed, right? Yes. You have to feel something or really see something that wasn't there before that kind of thing. And, uh, there's a woman named Dr. Mary Neal who wrote the best selling book to heaven and back. She's, um, a very well-known uh, orthopedic surgeon who had a near-death experience. She was in a kayaking accident. Yes. And, um, you know, drowned yep. and was on about 30 minutes without oxygen. You're familiar with the story. Yes, you know, I am. Yes, story. I am. Yeah. So she was coming to Chicago um, and I pitched her story to the paper that I worked for at the time. The company was the Chicago Tribune and they didn't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. You're kidding. Nope. Didn't want anything to do with it. Wow. I said, no, thanks. We're not talking. I was like, it's a medical doctor who's had a near death experience. She's mm -hmm. a living miracle. Nope, nope, nope. So I said to her, listen, can I interview you for my book anyway? And she was featured in my third book. This isn't the life I ordered. I interviewed, I interviewed a lot of people um, who had had near death experiences for that book. And she was absolutely, if you could say that somebody looked like they had touched God or whatever you want to call it, the light, she was glowing. Her eyes were piercing blue, like a color I hadn't seen before. And it was just incredible to be in her presence because she has such a complete trust and faith that every day she wakes up and says, in God, we trust. I trust you're going to put me where you want me. Because she's a living miracle in the way she told her story about how all of these things were placed in front of her exactly when she needed it to mm -hmm. just get her out of, you know, the, the very dangerous situation she was in to get her to medical help. And it's an incredible story. I, I was blown away by her. I, I remember the part in the story where she was, you know, it was time for her to return, and she didn't want to return. Exactly. She was like, yeah. don't put me back in that. And she was looking down at her body, yeah. seeing how broken her leg was, knowing what it would take to fix it because she's an orthopedic surgeon. She thought, no, please don't put me back in there. That hurts. And Jesus basically kicked her out of heaven, and I told her, I said, look, I don't think there are enough therapists in the world that could help me with that rejection. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> so... She was told to go back and tell yeah. the story to anyone who would listen. And when she told it to me, I told her I would tell this story to anybody who would listen because it was so impactful for me. She was told about how her son was going to die young and she had yeah. to help everybody deal with that. And exactly as it was predicted, her son did die that way. It was terrible, but she just enjoyed every moment. She didn't, you know, sweat the small stuff. She didn't nitpick about a, an unmade bed. She enjoyed his presence every day. And and, you know, you think about that as you leave the house in a hurry, like, oh, gosh, I should have said I love you to my kid. Always say I love you to the people you love because you never know when they're going to be taken away. Her son was roller skiing, which is like roller skating, but with like these longer skis and boom, you know, taken away instantly. But it's like he knew it was coming. He so so her story had such an impact. And she said she put a test to me. She said, I I just 
challenge you to every time you see something where you think that's weird, a coincidence, or you think Mm -hmm. of someone and they call or you ask for a sign and you get it. She said, look up and say, thank you. I acknowledge that I received it. And she said, it will start happening so often that you won't be able to explain it through science. The law of averages wouldn't be able to explain it ever. And so I thought, all right, lady, you got, you're on. And I literally started seeing heart shaped things. The the next two hours later, I mean, I'm talking gum that's in a perfect heart shape, dog poop in a perfect heart shape. I am not making this up. It happens so often. I would stop and take a picture with my phone. So now my Instagram, which is Jen Weigel, my Facebook, is just inundated with these heart shaped things, clouds, rocks, rice. You name it, I find it. And it's just making me laugh at this point. It's happening so often. So uh, she really changed my perspective that basically they're waiting to be called on to throw us signs and signals, whatever they would be, to everybody's got a different theory, right? Some people think it's angels, sure. their dead dad, God, Jesus, Buddha, whoever you think it is. But I was fascinated by the evidence, and I've been documenting the ever- evidence ever since, and that was, I think, 2014. There are so many members of the of the medical community who talk about these experiences that you're talking about very often. Yes. There's uh, Dr. Janice Amatuzio who mm-hmm. who has talked about it. Uh, one of the hosts on our network is Dr. Bernie Beitman. He's a psychiatrist who deals with uh, with coincidences and synchronicities. Absolutely, you know, it's yeah. right in front of us. But I, I think that we've been dumbed down by technology. And then it's through people like the people in your book and Dr. Amatuzio and then Dr. Beitman that were given the opportunity to stop and smell the roses again. Yes. Everything, you know, life is simple. We humans complicate it. We do. And I have three audiobooks that are volumes one, two, and three, just mm-hmm. called Doctors and Near Death Experiences, because I was so fascinated by it, I couldn't get enough of it. And the different doctors that are studying it Dr. Jeffrey Long, I got yeah, Dr. Raymond sure. Moody in there, yep. Evan Alexander. Mm-hmm. We have um, Do- uh, Jeffrey Rediger, is a, an amazing doctor from Harvard Medical School, and he went to meet John of God, who you've probably heard yes, of. Yes, in Brazil, the- yeah. yeah. Yes, the psychic surgeries. Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, a medical school guy who just didn't believe in any of this stuff. And then the next thing you know, he looks down and his heart is bleeding. You know, he has a a cut, you know, that's bleeding through his shirt. I mean, it was just, it's staggering. So he has an entire book on miracles that are medical miracles that are, you know, documented cases where there is no explanation for healing. So these medical miracles, these etheric miracles, uh, spiritual miracles, they're happening all the time. But they aren't getting the broadcast, I feel, that they deserve. And so I think it's really wonderful that you're having this conversation because the oh, more people you. that talk about it, you know, otherwise we'd still be smoking on airplanes. Yep. You know, you have to put the data out there, otherwise you won't make a change. You know, I've been doing this show for the last 29 years, five nights mm-hmm. a week, four hours a night. Yeah. And there are so many aspects that have stayed the same. Oh, you know, the UFOs, the Bigfoot, and, uh, and other other aspects but one of the most popular with the most convincing stories angels miracles yep. they're happening yep. and i don't know why more and more people just don't open their hearts to the right. possibility that every a miracle can happen they're real you just have to look for them you know I'm kind of a sappy guy, you know. I'm a, I'm a granddad. I've got you know twelve grandchildren for goodness sake, and they and they call me a teddy bear right. because I look at them and to me each one of them is a miracle. But I've seen the real miracles as well, miracles that defy you know common sense, common logic. Like this should not be happening. Absolutely. And it's these miracles that I agree with you that need to get out there. And this is one of the reasons why I do my show is to get the information out there and let the people make up their own mind, whether they want to believe or if they don't want to believe. It's totally up to them. But all I can do. Yep. Put the evidence out there and you decide for yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's a woman named PMH Atwater. Oh, I know PMH. Yes. Okay, so you probably are familiar with the story of of the children that have yes. had the near death experiences, where yeah. they would see love whenever someone was praying. Mm-hmm. It would go from the heart of the person praying, and literally in a rainbow, yeah. and it would shoot like a beam of light out of their heart 
into the recipient. And I think of that often, like shoot rainbows. What are you going to project out there? Is it going to be, you know, negativity and toxic thoughts? Or are you going to choose to send love from one way to another? Do you remember the Care Bears? Of course, exactly. (laughs) I thought I was going to date myself with that, but yes, we have them here, you have them there. Absolutely. That's right. They're they're, they're a little heart or the heart like Neil Diamond's song. Sure. Gosh. I think of E.T. Exactly. I tell my son that all the time. We watch that movie. I said, mm-hmm. turn your heart light on. It is literally what takes you back to neutral. That's right. And, and once again, is it synchronicity? Is it coincidence? Or is it a message that when you're ready, it all clicks in? Right. And it's true, too. I've been seeing 444s, 333s, mm-hmm. 222s, and people say, what does it mean, Jen? Yeah. What does it mean? I said, you know what? It means what you want it to mean. I think it means you're in alignment, but yeah. somebody else might think it means your angels are with you. Whatever you think, it's like Dumbo with the feather, which is you know a famous Disney movie. Yes. Movie. Thought the feather yeah. could make him fly. Yeah. Whatever makes you fly. <laughs> you know, Jen, I believe that belief is the strongest power in the universe. Yeah. If you believe it, you can do it. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And I, I've always had the, the, uh, the ability to be a dreamer. I used, used to be called a dreamer when I was a kid because I, I would dream, I would daydream, and I would, I would talk about things that no one would understand that I talk about today and makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. Right. And I had always said the only difference between a dream and reality is making it happen. The dream is the idea. And you work towards making that dream happen. And when it does, that's the reality of it. And there are so many wonderful things in this world. And you and I have to take our break for the news. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a great hour. Exo Nation, Jennifer Weigel is our guest. Her website is www.jenweigel.com. That's J-E-N-W-E-I-G-E-L.com. And she's the author of several books, but the one we're talking about this hour here in the Exxon is Psychics, Healers, and Mediums, a journalist, a road trip, and a voice from the other side. And we'll both be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget you can get your complimentary copy of the X Chronicles newspaper online at www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Exonation, uh, Jennifer Weigel is our special guest this hour, www.jenweigel.com, J-E-N-W-E-I-G-E-L.com. Jen, what interviews that you did for your books changed your life? Oh, wow. Well, the Dr. Mary Neal one totally oh, changed my life, yeah. was for sure. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. The very first encounter, I think, that's in my first book, Stay Tuned, with James Van Prague, well-known mm-hmm. medium. Um, ha- let's see. To Let's see. Talking to Heaven was his first book that right. I got my hands on back in the late 90s. Have you ever interviewed with James? Have you ever talked with yes, James? Yes, I have. Okay. So here he was. Talking to Heaven was his first book. It was before The Ghost Whisper. It was before any of the TV shows he worked on. Mm-hmm. And I was a very skeptical journalist and um, because I really had to be a believer of this, I wanted to believe, but I just thought that everybody has a dead grandma and everybody has a dead grandma with rings. So if anybody <laughs> brings that up one more time, I was going to roll my eyes right out the door, you know. So James came to uh, do this interview. And at the time, there was no Google. There was no, you know, there was barely any email. This sure. was a long time ago. And he came in, and at the time, my my um, my former father-in-law had just passed away, and he came through with these specifics that I didn't even know about. So we, I took the you know VHS. That's how old this was. Mm-hmm. The VHS tape of the interview, and I brought it down to my mother-in-law at the time, 
to view. And she was so rattled that she got up and walked out of the room and shut the door and needed some alone time. My gosh. (laughs) And this was a very staunch Catholic who used to joke with me that I was going straight to hell. Um, And she would say jokingly like, oh, okay, you go keep interviewing these people. I'll come back. I'll find you, you know, ha ha ha, when she's on the other side. So sure enough, she she did. I went to Lilydale, New York, which I'm sure you're familiar yes. with, with all of the spiritualists, mm-hmm. right? And and I wrote about this in Stay Tuned as well. I, I go there, and I'm hoping to connect with my dad, who had passed away from a brain tumor. And all I get was my mother-in-law. Every stop, she was like, I mean, it was the Kathy show. It was unbelievable. And one of the things she had told me was is that if she came back as a sign, it would be as a swan. And I said, why a swan? And she kind of goofy put her arms up like she was doing Swan Lake. And she said, because they're so graceful and they don't have to put their butts in the water. And I said, okay. (laughs) So when I (laughs) – she had a really wicked sense of humor. She was so funny. And um, when we got to Lilydale and I walked into this one psychic named Marty Hughes who didn't know anything but my first name of Jen, you know, couldn't look me up ahead of time. And she says, I've got this lady in here, you know, cigarettes dangling from her mouth. And she was a chain smoker and, you know, she's doing Swan Lake and she was kind of putting her arms up exactly like, you know, like she had done for me. And it was really funny because, you know, she's, she's dancing for you. And she says, you know, um, the food is pretty average and she wants a (laughs) highball. So that was very funny to me because that's exactly what my mother-in-law would have said. And so when I asked her if she had any messages for her family, you know, it was like this big, heavy pause. And the the psychic looked at me and she goes, "Um," she says, brush your teeth before you go to bed, which was like a, a real inside joke. And so that to me was, again, this woman couldn't possibly have known any of these things. And for a, a Catholic who didn't believe in any of it, to do all this, it, I felt was a real validation that there is something going on. Don't know what, but something's going on. With all the interviews that you've done, the books you've written, do you have any idea or any conception on how these people can communicate with the other side? Well, I think this goes back to my belief that we all could do this. If we, I've become very, very into the research of our brain and mm-hmm. how flexible and malleable it is right. and how... We can retrain it, rewire it, and how we're using such a small percentage of it. And so I've tapped into these. There's a a place here in the United States called the Monroe Institute. Are you familiar with them at all? Yes, I am. Okay, of course. So I figured you would be, but I just want to make sure. So they've got all these uh, hemisync meditations for Mm -hmm. helping with PTSD. And for those who aren't familiar who are listening, um, it was founded in the 80s in West Virginia, and basically they wanted to help train the brains of PTSD soldiers to help it heal post-traumatic after they've been in wars. And they found that these sounds, it would be like in the right ear, the left ear, different tones, different tempos, could really heal the brain. And that as a result of it, you know, a lot of these soldiers became remote viewers for the CIA, <laughs> which was a nice party trick. So um, it creates this sort of antenna. And I believe we are all antennas. We're all radars that can basically get signals from our dead loved ones. And instead of picking up the phone and going 1-800-PSYCHIC, we ourselves could be that radar and our antenna if we are doing the right guided kind of meditation and getting quiet enough. I mean, it really could just take three minutes. I interviewed a doctor Dr. Judith Orloff, who talks about the three-minute meditation and how it changes your, you know, your physiology. Yeah. So this is possible. It's science. We could all do it. Um, and I believe, however, some people are born with the ability better than others. Like, you know, what are you really good at other than interviewing Rob? Like, are you a, a numbers guy or are you creative? Can you sing? Oh, gosh, you yeah. I, I, used to, I used to play. I still do play guitar. I'm an artist. I do oil paintings. Hey, and, uh, so you've you know, got yeah. that ability. Yeah, but exactly. I know I can't. I pick up a guitar and it terrifies me, but I can play the piano. So, you know, some people are better at. Sure. I can't do my taxes. I have somebody do that. I'm not a numbers person, but I love to sing and speak in front of audiences, and that's all fine for me, too. And I'm a writer. So people have different strengths. And I think that part of this whole world of the psychics, healers and mediums is Mm. you can't lump them all into one category. We have the the hands on healers that are shamanic. And then there's the there's the clear audience that's hearing a message in their ear. Mm -hmm. I met a woman who literally in her mid 40s started getting whispers from what she calls angels in her ear. 
the clear audience messages came so clear that now she's a full-time medium psychic and she's you know basically changed careers talk about later in life it can happen at any time so i think that some people have the ability more i'd say initially right mm -hmm. like the natural gift yeah. than others but we all just like with a piano you can either do chopsticks or you can play mozart but we can all pick up a finger and strike a key i believe that all children are born with the gift and we as members of society dumb them down oh absolutely in yeah. fact Here's a story that changed my life that's um, in my second book, I'm Spiritual Dammit. My son, mm -hmm. to your point, was two years old, and I heard him talking in his room in the baby monitor. And, you know, kind of gibberish. And I went sure. up there, and he was laughing and pointing at the ceiling. And I said, what's going on, kiddo? And he says, I'm going to be the guy. I'm like, what guy? He says, that guy gives me fire trucks. I'm like, great, go to bed. Mm -hmm. So the next day, he's running in the basement, and he stops in his tracks, and he points to a picture of my dad, who was no longer with us. And he says, there's the guy, mommy. And I said, what? He said, that guy, he comes at night. He's the one who gives you the fire trucks. He's so nice. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I thought, oh, it's just my imagination. He's making it up. Well, the conversations continued. You know, then my grandmother, Virginia, was coming and saying, oh, grandma loves what you've done with the earrings. And at the time, I was wearing a pair of her earrings that I had made into pierced ears because she had the screw back, you know, and I, and I made them so that I could wear them. And you know, these things happened, and that was an experience that I couldn't explain away. I couldn't just ignore. And for anybody out there with a child that has these stories, I wrote about this, and I'm telling you, the emails came in in droves. There are so many yeah. psych children out there that need support. They need to know they're not crazy. Otherwise, they're going to start over-medicating, and then we're going to have an entirely different problem. Well, look what we do to our kids. You know, we, we, we bring them into a world of fantasy to open up their imaginations. You know, there's a man that flies in a, in a sleigh with eight tiny reindeer. There's a, there's a cow that jumps over a moon, a dish that runs away with a spoon, a lady who lives in a shoe. And we take this, you know, from, from before they go to school, to nursery school, to kindergarten, to first grade, second grade. And then we say, you know what? We lied. Right, exactly. I said that to my son the other day. I said, why did you figure out there was no Santa? Yeah. And Sorry, spoiler alert for anyone listening. Wait, wait a sec, wait a sec. <laughs> there, is, there, there, there is no Santa? And he said, when you told me, Mom, and I was crushed. And I thought, well, what damage have I done? You know, mm -hmm. I, I just, I completely agree with you. We, we, yeah. we give them the wrong set of beliefs. And then a lot of these kids, we make them, we force them to sit through this, this you know, church kind of situation because yeah. our parents and their parents and their parents. I'm not knocking church. I think faith is very important. If you use it in the community way of love, inclusion, and inspiration, then I'm all for it. But if you use it as a reason to separate, exclude, and judge, then I am not. I am not all for it. And so I feel like we are completely focusing on the wrong messages, and it's it's really unfortunate. We have to we have to shift the pendulum the mm -hmm. other way. I, I agree, and I think there's one important word that you left out when you were describing church, and that was control. Oh yeah. Of course. And that's why the spiritualists went yep. out into the woods and formed Lilydale because, mm -hmm. you know, the Catholics were so mad that they were taking some of their business. You know, I'm fascinated by spiritualism because it came at a time when, you know, in 1848 when it was founded and by the Civil War, you know, one person in every household, it's believed during the time of Abraham Lincoln, was a spiritualist. People were seeking. They wanted to know that the spirit lived on and that they didn't just have to go to church to talk to God, that they could talk to to God from their living room. And and that's the core message, I believe, of all of this that the control of the church was trying to prevent. It's pretty funny when you think of it because the the majority of the rituals and the celebrations that the church uses today, they took from the pagans. Right, yeah. of course. Right. Interesting. Yep. You and I have to take our final break. Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us. Great hour here on the Exxon with our special guest, Jennifer Weigel. Her website is www.jenweigel.com, and we're talking to Jen this hour about her new book that's out called Psychic Healers and Mediums, a Journalist, a Road Trip, and a Voice from the Other Side. I'll be back on the other side with our guest this hour as we wrap up this hour here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away now.
Exo Nation, uh, Jen Weigel is our special guest this hour. She's the author of Psychic Healers and Mediums, a journalist, a road trip, and a voice from the other side. Her website is jenweigel.com. First of all, Jen, I want to thank you ever so much for coming on the show. It's been a great pleasure having you with us. Uh, it's oh, like my old, pleasure, really. It's like old homes week, and the, the you know everybody that you've talked about, except one or two, has been on the show over the years, and right. they've all made a wonderful impact and a wonderful um, contribution to trying to get the message across. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Long from the uh, IANDS, I believe, and yes. uh, PMH Atwater, uh, a lovely lady. Um, Dr. Judith Orloff, she's been on the show. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, th- these are the people who want to do so much to help so many. And yet, Jen, there are those out there who buy a website, get on Skype, call themselves psychics, charge 60, 70 bucks a half hour, and take people to the cleaners. You know, I have a real problem with that, and mm-hmm. I think you do as well. I and and do. that's where they pray. You know, it's sort of like a. a and I hate to say the used car salesman because that's just a stereotype, but it's like preying on that person that walks into the car dealer and goes, yeah. I don't know what I want. And you're like, ooh, this is going to be good. There, unfortunately, are people out that out there like that in every profession. You've got them in, in newsrooms, right? You've got them in doctor's offices, and you've got them in insurance salesmen in every career. But the psychics that do that with people's livelihoods where they're literally – and I say this. If anybody tells you that you have to get you know a curse off your house for $5,000 or that you have to buy a piece of jewelry and, oh, but you can give it back when the curse is gone, like just run – don't walk to the nearest exit. I have heard story after story. One woman literally paid six figures yeah. to somebody. And, and I'm so livid by this because it's not okay. And I actually, I'm trying to get a, a, a TV show launched where, where we go out and we, we take these people mm-hmm. uh, and, and stop them from doing this. Because it is tragic when people are grieving as it is. And that's really why I got into this at first, Rob, was that grief is very expensive and when you are hoping to hear from your dead loved one you will pay just about anything for confirmation and that is the worst kind and i have seen these people and i have experienced them and i that's why i have a tab on my website called jenny's list i I want people to email me asking hey what do you think of this one so i can tell you if i've got any data on that person if they're bad because i don't want anyone to be taken advantage of that really upsets me yeah up here in canada there's there's actually a part of the criminal code that makes makes it illegal to do that. And law enforcement agencies across Canada are really clamping down on these fraudulent artists. Good. Good. They yeah. should. I mean, it's really unfortunate. But so when people are grieving, and, mm-hmm. and, and I understand, sometimes, you know, you need to hear. If you have a tragedy that happened, you yeah. want to hear that your loved one is watching over you and that they were with you on the bench or that they were with you in the car. But I always tell people, listen for that inner guidance. If you get goosebumps or if you think of them and hear their favorite song or if you see their favorite bird, they are with you. That is their message. They are absolutely giving you a, a graceful kiss on the cheek in that very moment. And the more you open to it, you know, the grief is only as deep is your love and so it's going you know it's going to hurt there is no doubt but once you get to the other side of that pain and you start looking for those signs and signals and you basically start assigning i i like to assign my dad little tasks like okay you know let me know if this is going to work out and if i'm not supposed to go there you better put an anvil in front of my path because i think i'm going and then literally an anvil will come into my path and so I feel like we all have these angels and guides, but we have to ask them for their help because of free will. Mm -hmm. They're not just going to intervene unless we ask for it, unless it's some divine plan with their karma. And then that's a little too complicated for me to figure out. (laughs) I believe in my heart of hearts that the, that one of the most important things that the people that both you and I have interviewed over the years who want to make a difference is they give us all hope. They give us the ability to see beyond the veil, to see beyond the the darkness, to to see beyond the grief that yeah. there is something. Right. There is, you know, the people that I've talked to over the years who have had near-death experiences, the story is the same. Yeah. 
You know what? Uh, exactly. And the kids are the most oh, fascinating. Oh, to my me. gosh, yeah. yeah. They can't compare notes. They're not no. at the library checking out books on near-death experiences. No. And and yet every NDE does have a lot of the similarities, but then mm-hmm. there's still those those unique things that are a little different from Eben Alexander's, from you know, PMH's, too. They're yeah. just a little bit different. And so I love to tell people, you know, you, your filter is going to be a little different than somebody else's. You know, we all look at it. It's just like those Instagram filters, and you just kind of scroll across everyone's just a little bit more blue or a little bit more yellow or a little bit more black and white, but there's still an image there. And that's the important part. And so, and then another thing that just recently come into my um, awareness Mm -hmm. that I didn't use to practice is the clearing of my space. I don't know how um, ceremonial you are about sage or Palo Santo or even holy water or whatever it is, but I am realizing the power of when you have negative people yeah. in your space, your car, your house, how you have to get that energy out. You can't just hope for the best. And people bring in hitchhikers. I've they experienced do. it. <laughs> I agree. <It's> real. <laughs> I, I agree. In fact, it's come to a point where I've told my wife, you're not going to, uh, to these, uh, these antique stores and buying antiques because we had a bad experience with an antique that she brought in. Oh, absolutely. I just interviewed a woman named Susan Rowland, who's a great mm-hmm. psychic medium, and she talked about an antique. She literally opened the cabinet, and a German soldier flew out at her face. Yeah. And she was like, okay, this one's going back. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of energy in furniture and things. And sometimes it's loving if it's passed down from, like, your grandmother or yes. something. But if it comes from a store and you have no idea whose it was, you have to do a ceremony with salt and sage and all these things. And I didn't used to believe in it until I had an experience myself where – Things were going bump in the night, and until that piece of furniture got out of the house, I didn't know what was going on. So I am now a staunch believer that, and in your car as well, I knew somebody who had seven car accidents in two months. Seven. And then she saged her car, and she did this whole little ceremony. And, you know, this is a Native American practice. It's not like it was, mm-hmm. you know, these are hundreds and hundreds of years yeah. of of beliefs and and hey if it's a, a cross hanging from your windshield whatever you think will do to clear your space apparently it really makes a difference and that's new to me let me ask you what is your what is your why do you think there is so much more awareness or or talk or experiences that people are having with with uh, negative entities or or demons I think it's because where there's light, there's dark. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really truly is Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. And the more light that you have, the more darkness will try to squash that light. So it's important to do your due diligence, right? If you never took a shower, you'd start to stink. And so I tell people that they have to take a light shower. (laughs) It's just that simple. We can't just walk around and think that we're light workers or we're doing important things and not do our own spiritual homework because... It's like taking a lint roller and rolling it on the carpet of somebody who has 10 cats. You really will attract that stuff if you don't take care of yourself. So whether it's with meditation or with exercise, even just physical movement can clear off that energy, right? And a shower, the ceremony of water is very, very real. And if we don't take care of ourselves energetically, physically, spiritually, then we will get those hitchhikers and it will bring us down. We'll start to notice patterns of negative things happening, bad people surrounding us, you know, negative energy just attracts more negative energy. This is where I believe the religious philosophies of the past come in and the different uh, rituals or celebrations that ward off evil or or cleanse can be a great asset to us in today's uh, society. I believe in the power of the crucifix. I believe in the power of holy water. I believe in the power of salt. Yep, I do too. And you know, I honestly, you don't have Mm -hmm. to believe in a baptismal, but just the whole ceremony of cleansing with water, especially salt water, is known to be so cleansing. It is. You know, clean your fruit with it, you should clean your antique furniture with it. (laughs) That is so true. That is so true. And there are so many wonderful things. And, And another amazing power that I think a lot of people are waking up to is the power of prayer. Oh, yeah. In fact, that's another thing with the near-death experiences Mm -hmm. when these people on the other side seeing prayers. They are seen. They are actually traveling. They're going somewhere, and they're received. And so if a true heartfelt prayer is given by one for another, not, I want more money, or I'm on a boyfriend, not those selfish prayers, right? But the real heartfelt ones, please help them. They're having a hard time. Please help them feel grace. That is all heard by a spirit, and you cannot do any harm by putting that out there. 
Have you ever come across a true fraud uh, during your uh, during your research? Well, I've come across some. But they're always good at something, right? Mm-hmm. They're good at personality. They they're good at reading people, right? right? You can look at somebody and decide if they're married or not. Sure. They can always guess. They're probably looking for a relationship if they're not in, wearing a wedding ring, mm-hmm. or or maybe they're happy not happy with their work, you know, the basics, right? I think there are some people out there that are just good at reading people, but they use their intuitive abilities for the wrong reasons. I see. Listen, Jen, I hate to do this, but we're out of time for tonight. I want to thank you ever so much for joining us. I wish you continued success, and I'd love to have you back on in the future. Oh, it would be my greatest pleasure. Keep doing what you're doing, and thank you so much for having me. I'll keep doing what I'm doing if you keep what you're doing doing. Like that. All right, Jen, nice meeting you, and uh, take care of yourself. And Exo Nation, if you'd like to find out more about uh, Jen Weigel, our guest this hour, Christmas is coming up. Her book, Psychics, Healers, and Mediums, a journalist, a road trip, and a voice from the other side will make a great Christmas gift. Yeah. And we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exo from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget, you can always send me an email. Love to get your comments, good, bad, or indifferent. Exxon at TV.com. <laughs> 